gonna start recording. Hello, guys. Can you hear my voice? Yes, I can see the messages now. All right, I'm gonna, not gonna follow a uh, big blue button because it's not uh, really working for me anymore. So I'm just gonna write on big blue button. Please come to Zoom because big blue button is currently not working well. I will do the lecture. Again, Zoom invitation is here. I'm gonna copy paste this. Right, I'm gonna wait a bit for all the participants to come in. And uh, currently, we are nine people. Uh, seems like the class is not that much today. And I am going to. Uh, start uh, to my course with uh, what we have covered uh, last lecture. Can you all hear me and can you also see my screen? Can you please write on to the group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. So I'm just going to keep the Zoom uh, group chat here. So if you type something, uh, I, will, I will be able to see it. Please uh, disable any background noise because it's not nice. I'm going to mute you all, actually. So make sure that there is no background noise so you can hear me clearly. In our last lecture, if you remember, we covered up the, some of the terminology in Scrum. We had seen agile development. We said that agile development is very focused on delivering the product as soon as possible to the customer. And the practices are basically uh, creating a product backlog and putting uh, some requirements from the top of your backlog into the cycles of development. And in a limited time, let's say in two, three weeks, to release uh, the next version. So it is kind of like an iterative development strategy or practice where you can uh, develop a framework for your company to work in a limited number of outcomes, limited number of uh, product logs at a time. And then once these are uh, done, you go into the next stage and it goes on and on. That is a terminology that is followed in Scrum. And each cycle that we talk, for example, are called the uh, sprints. So every development iteration, usually run in two to four weeks long and within that time you continuously develop this this is the core idea behind most agile development approaches while scrum is not the only one uh, there are many different approaches that you can follow the idea here is to uh, refine build demonstrate through a prototype cycle so the prototypes themselves actually are the versions of the system so you come up with each version in that uh, specific time. So before I continue with my course, do you have any questions? Now that uh, we covered some of it, do you have anything to ask me? No, I think everything is clear. Right, just to repeat what we have covered in the last lecture, we covered up the, uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of agile development. We saw how uh, the industry is following this. We saw the principles such as the customer involvement, incremental delivery, people, not the processes themselves, embracing the idea of change and keeping things as simple as possible. So uh, one of the popular practices you will find in agile development uh, are the Scrum. That is the most popular one, the management method. And of course, Scrum is usually used with extreme programming. And there are, of course, other popular approaches. Like today, I added more, actually. I added Kanban, which was not available on my slides. 
and lean software development. Again, uh, this was not available in my slides before, and these are good practices that have been used in the uh, last couple of years, let's say last five, six years. So uh, yeah, I added them into my slides. So if you refresh Moodle and access to the new uh, state of the uh, slides, you will be able to see that um, they are actually updated. So just to repeat once again, Scrum is a very popular uh, approach here. Uh, daily meetings are held with like not passing down from uh, not going to be over 15 minutes. And what they do is that they review the daily progress, prioritize work done by that day. And these are usually done in uh, short face-to-face -face meetings. The Scrum Master is a person coordinating these activities. He or she is basically the person who organizes, makes sure that everything is on the track through uh, uh, these discussions or through following uh, boards, basically. They, they all often use Kanban boards in Scrum as well. So what they do here is that they don't have a project manager, but uh, a person who is responsible from these agile approaches or activities is called the Scrum Master. Finally, product backlog is probably one of the most important parts of the Scrum. This is the to-do list, which is generated from the uh, requirements uh, to deliver to the customer. And what happens here is that they take up the, uh, the most important bits, the, the prioritized items from the backlog, and uh, within those sprint cycles, they try to address these uh, uh, as soon as possible within that sprint cycle. So that is the terminology behind Scrum. There are, of course, other agile methods that you should be uh, you should be aware of, especially if you are planning to be a software developer, a software engineer uh, after your graduation. These need to be uh, recognized, or you need to know them because many companies abroad, particularly the international ones, are using these practices. And you will, as I show you in the last lecture, they are actually advertising these things in their job offers. So when you apply to a job, someone in the last lecture asked me, do we have to know these things? Yes, you have to know them. You have to know how to these practices work because you're gonna get involved into these uh, management or frameworks that they follow and if you don't know how they work uh, you will definitely struggle uh, so one of the, the uh, other methods that I'm gonna cover today are uh, lean software development Kanban which is an important one uh, and we're going to look into some distributed systems, distributed uh, practices, which is assuming that you are not uh, co-located in one location, but rather distributed. And uh, the one that you actually use quite often in uh, your own projects is Crystal. This is a very small practice in agile development. You actually use this, and many of the students do anyway. And we're going to look into those ones as well. So let's get started with lean software development. What does it mean lean software development? Now, the first thing I want to say about lean software development is that this is not specific to software industry. It actually uh, is a practice uh, applied by Toyota. Do you all know Toyota, the company? Yeah, they have actually uh, introduced this uh, practice to uh, the world and then it is uh, uh, embraced by the software company nowadays. And what it does is that it is based on optimizing the resources and eliminating the waste. So you are focusing only on what the product needs and that's it. That is the core idea behind lean software development. It is based on the practices, as I told you, Toyota introduced in 1980s, 
but nowadays it is regarded as a, a layer of software uh, agile development. This development uh, emphasize, method emphasizes the speed and low cost achievement. And the core idea that to achieve this, to emphasize speed and the low cost achievement, it's true effective teamwork. At the core of lean software development, the idea that they emphasize over and over again is a team that works effectively. So this is the core of lean software development. It is trying to emphasize speed, eliminate waste, lower the costs, and use the resources in a most optimized way by helping each other, working as a team. That is lean software development. So there are, of course, some uh, uh, practices they follow, and we're going to look into this. Uh, Lean LSD aims to develop, deliver a product or a service. Nowadays, the software are regarded as services to customers as quickly and as efficient as possible. This requires a team to be committed to work together. That should be committed, I'll fix the typo, and to continue the process improvements. So the teams should work with one another regardless of their level. And the management functionality, which is very important, needs to empower and respect the people who are in the development. Now, the management must facilitate this, not control it. And that is a very, very important approach. I cannot uh, underline how important this is. Because in our industry, majority of the conflict that happens, such as the software release dates, for example, or the resources, or uh, whether or not the software will be available to customer on a specific time, or they're going to use some specific features, they are actually caused by the conflict between the management and the teams themselves. If a software company has a specific publisher telling them owning the organization, owning the, the entire production, and tells them that you got to release this software product by the beginning of May. And if the team approaches them and tell them, no, this product is never going to be ready by that, they can spend hours and hours of why this is not possible to management, but at the end of the day, management decides whether it's going to be aired or not. It is not the team's job to decide that. Now, this is very important. It is actually a cancer in our industry because the teams, the people who are working in the software industry does not have the power to decide when the software is going to be available or when the, the, those certain functionalities will be ready to be released and so forth. So lean software development came and it emphasized that management, your job is not to control us. Your job is to make, make sure that this empowerment, this respect among people will be going on and your job is to facilitate this, not to control it. And that is the core idea behind being software development. A person who owns Toyota is not interfering how the development is being done. It is regarded as a part of the team, not someone who controls it. Okay, it's not going to tell the people how do they do the job, but rather try to negotiate with them at the same level to release the product as a team. They are still regarded the part of the team, no matter what their position are. So this is a very important uh, practice being applied in the software industry because it works really, really well. So we're gonna call, go down and look at the, some ideas here. Lean software development is based on Toyota's lean product development, and it is not a terminology specific to our field, 
I already mentioned that. And software development needs humans to solve problems. The team as a whole should understand and analyze the problems. It is people who build a process and people must be given the authority to come up with the best solution. So as you can see from this paragraph, it is the people's working together that produces the solution to problems rather than there is the authority to come up and tell them that you have to do this or you got to release this or you got to have this feature or you got to do this. The hierarchical structure is kind of like minimized in this kind of practice to make sure that the people would work together with one another. Once again, this practice emphasizes teams working together. The actual values in lean software development are eliminating the waste and building the quality. So these are the two things that they are trying to focus on. And how do we do this? We value the customer needs, value what the customer is willing to pay for, and value what you desire to produce what, uh, for the customers. So you regard yourself as a developer uh, that you're going to use this product. And what you need to do here is that you need to know uh, what the customer need actually and what the customer is willing to pay for. So you can put yourself in the shoes of a customer without assuming anything. You do a market research, define the needs of the customer and look into what they are willing to pay. And then having done so, you produce a product or a service that those customers will be willing to pay for and to use it. So there are some specific steps that you need to be able to know in order to make sure that the lean software development works. The first one is breaking down the requirements. The breaking down the requirements should be done in a way that every single broken down requirement are, are they are transferred into a unit that will function in the program or software. So this is very important. If there are requirements that you uh, listed, but it is not implemented as a unit or not being planned to be implemented in the program, in the software as a unit, you just get rid of it. Every requirement that is generated is also generated by identifying the values of the customer. You do not assume anything. Communication to customer at the first level is one of the practices that is used in lean for software development. There is no assumptions here. Everything uh, generated from what customer values and applied into the software as a unit. One of the most important and identifying features of lean software development is eliminating the waste. What does it mean eliminating the waste? Well, if there's anything that is specified but not reasonable enough to be deployed, you automatically remove it. So you are trying to use the resources as efficient, as optimized as possible. If you define a requirement that is not reasonable enough, to be deployed. You don't have enough basis to apply that requirement, that feature in your software, you disregard it because you don't have a base. This is basically uh, coming, is very connected to how you define the customer values. So if you didn't map those customer values very well, then it will be uh, eliminated at some stage. The Another important idea about lean software development is to monitor the work in progress, WIP, to limit the unnecessary effort spent for doing something that is work in progress. Okay, so you do not give uh, jobs that are uh, going to be work in progress for a long time, let's say six months, but rather if there is something there that will be in work in progress constantly or continuously, you divide this into a series of tasks and you try to achieve it in shorter milestones. And finally, this should be the fifth one, 
Anyone working in the project is regarded as part of the team. This also includes the managers, the QA analysts, the developers, the, even the people who are doing the market research. Everyone is putting their efforts as a team. Just because he or she is a manager is not regarded as someone. You can still freely talk in those meetings that you held daily basis or weekly to those people openly because they are still regarded as part of the team. It's not like there's an authority coming in there and telling you, well, no, this is it, that is that. There, the, the authority is tried to be minimized uh, as much as possible. So I'm reading in here that uh, someone, Ahmed Ramadan, lost the connection. Of course, I can send the link. I'm going to go into the uh, session. You can also, I think, invite others. So I'm not quite sure why you are disturbing me about this. It is possible for you to invite others as well into Zoom. Only person in this conference. So it's there. Just tell him to connect, whoever that is, and you can uh, achieve it. Now, until here, do you have any questions that you want to ask me? Also, sending you to here so you can copy paste this link to him if you want to. Do you have any questions? Yes or no? Can you at least respond? Okay, thank you very much. So lean software development principles are specifying the values, mapping the value stream, establishing flow. This is very important. Uh, pool systems, again, an important feature. And finally, eliminating the waste. So these are the five steps that being followed and actually pool systems uh, and establishing the plot is kind of like the core idea of most agile development uh, approaches that you're gonna see. What you're gonna see in here uh, in the lean software development is that in the first part, you specify the values. You define the values from the customer perspective by doing research, of course expressing the values in terms of specific uh, product or service. Now you break up those, break down, sorry, those requirements into units that will be applied in the software. If the requirement themselves is not gonna be applicable as a task, as a feature in the software, you get rid of them, okay? You do not put any uh, pressure on those requirements that has no basis. You do not do assumptions here. You map the value stream, map all of the steps, the value added and the non-values that bring a product and service to the customer. Having done so, you need to accept that lean principles are not something that's gonna be completed in two, three weeks, but rather it's gonna be a continuous flow of product, services, and information from end to end through the process. This is gonna establish what we call as the flow, which is a continuous cycle, an iterative development that will go on and on. And as soon as you stop it, then you break the cycle. Implementing the pool, pool means that when you take up the, uh, an item from the backlog and put it into the development cycle, that's a pool. Also, in some approaches, pool can also be regarded as in the development when, you, when a sprint cycle, for example, is completed and passed into the next stage, which is going into the sprint cycle and uh, reaching through the customer, that is also can be regarded as a pool. Pool systems is a practice that is often followed in agile development. Scrum applies this by, for example, taking up anything from the backlog into the sprint cycle is actually really regarded as a pool. 
So if we go up to the screen, uh, screen cycles, so anything that goes from the backlog into this process of review plan develop, uh, sorry, select plan develop and review is actually regarded as a pull. And any item that goes from this cycle, the sprint cycle into the potentially shippable software is also regarded as a pull. Pull system is a practice that is very often you will see in the software development, particularly with agile approaches. Having done the pull, which is gonna be an iterative process, the complete elimination of waste, so all activities create value for the customer by breakthrough and continuous improvement of the project. So what you do here is that you uh, uh, eliminate the waste, whatever is being not done there or you disregard it, you eliminate it and try to use the resources as much as efficient as possible before it goes to the next cycle. And then the cycle repeats itself again. Now, do you have any questions about lean software development? Everything is clear. Okay, very good. Now, one of the things that you should know is that lean software development uh, is as is kind of like regarded as a framework and it is not something 100% uh, related to agile development. Uh, it is kind of like a part of the iterative development, I would say, but not necessarily agile. So a company can follow up an iterative development method. They can use uh, uh, lean software development, but uh, it doesn't need to be uh, agile. One of the most important things that I see uh, by, you know, watching videos or looking into comp how they, the companies work is that they often combine lean development with agile to get up the, the most efficient outcome. Okay, these are not like, uh, you should not think of these practices as prescriptions that you subscribe or something and then you keep using them uh, over and over again, okay? This is not how it works. It rather works in a fashion that uh, you kind of like um, uh, pick up the ones that suits into how your company works the best, okay? There's another practice that you will see quite often, again, if you are looking for job offers. I wanna know how many of you are looking have looked any job offer online or LinkedIn or Indeed websites in the last month. Is there anyone out there who has looked for a job offer, like vacancies? Yes, some people say yes, Darlington, uh, Ravant, Kadiva, very good. Like, have you ever seen Kanban? or Scrum or uh, Lean development before? Have you ever seen these, these uh, terminologies? Yes. Very, very good. The Kanban is a practice, again, just like Scrum, and it is actually very similar to Scrum in many ways. And uh, it's a work management system that has risen over the past years and the idea is to emphasize the visualization of the work and limit work in progress. And so by doing these two, you can maximize the efficiency, which is also called the flow. So in Kanban, one of the most important thing is to the visualization of the work. What are you working on? What is the outcome? Like what, what's going, going to happen? What is this story? How is this gonna pass into the next stage? All these things are actually done in a very visual way. And it seems like it's working quite well because many companies actually, more and more companies are applying this uh, practice. It is a terminology uh, that is uh, risen from the Japanese world. Uh, world and it means visual signal, or roughly the card you can see. You make the workflow, the, the, your basically job, like a game basically. 
you have a board and you have you can use Kanban cards and you uh, demonstrate your work in a visual way uh, so that this could help you to see what you are working on very clearly and it will also help others to visualize what you are working on and understand it probably better. This is a practice used in the software industry nowadays because uh, what you are working on or what is done in software is often invisible or intangible. We said this in the first lectures, if you remember in the class, that it is not always easy to see the progress in software world. It is not like, for example, civil engineers where they go to the building, they can see that walls are building up, they can see that uh, doors are put in, I don't know, windows are there, so they can see a solid progress because there is a material stuff ongoing. And in almost every engineering field, this is true. You can look into machine, uh, mechanical engineering, electric and electronic engineering, uh, civil engineering, all these fields, they are working on uh, something physical, mostly. While they do also uh, develop softwares, Part of their work is also working with machines or uh, something material. In our field, however, when we talk about software engineers, everything is intangible and very invisible to track down. All they see is a user interface, and unless you develop that user interface, it is especially very difficult to people to, to explain people what you are working on because they don't see any solid progress. And in here, Kanban can be very, very powerful tool. In fact, next week, I'm planning to give you uh, an assignment to basically develop, which you, you're going to work in pairs, to, uh, to use a series of agile development tools so that you can understand these practices hopefully better. So going down now, I'm going to show you uh, the practices followed in Kanban. Kanban is often practiced through what we call as a Kanban board and sometimes supported with Kanban cards, aiming to limit WIP so that the time used for work will be the most efficient one. The Kanban practices are very similar to Scrum. It's almost the same. Many of the terminologies, many of the things that people do in both practices are the same. Kanban, however, is not specific to software engineering. It is being used in other uh, areas as well. But uh, many of the software industry uh, companies are applying this practice, even combining them with Scrum and using uh, the one that they, they see that it fits to them. As an example, uh, activity manager, the person who is responsible for managing those daily activities in Scrum, they are called Scrum Master in Scrum, whereas this role is regarded as an agile coach in Kanban. Kanban is applied uh, very similarly to Scrum, and the difference lies in how these are applied, basically. So one of the first uh, big difference between Kanban and Scrum is that in Scrum you have sprint cycles, so you have this product backlog taking up the stuff uh, on that product backlog and uh, putting them into sprint cycles, which is two to four weeks, and completing them. Where in Kanban you don't have those sprint cycles, but rather what you have is an, a continuous process. There are no more sprint cycles of two to three weeks time, but rather it is more focused on continuously delivering the software. So in here, the aim is to achieve work in progress limit rather than completing the product backlog. What you do in Scrum is that you have to address those requirements as soon as possible in the next batch of your software in the sprint cycle where Kanban, yes, they do, they do want to reach that, but they, their idea here is to focus on 
to limit the work in progress, to make sure that the work is done. If the work is too long, too big, divide it. Divide it into tasks so that people can achieve it in a week or two weeks or whatsoever. And rather than putting them into sprint cycles, it is a continuous process. That is a big difference between Scrum and Kanban. In reality, neither Kanban nor Scrum is something that you prescribe and you follow 100%, but rather teams decide what works for them and take the good measures. For example, there is the concept of using Kanban boards in Kanban. So what you do here is a, a list of uh, a backlog and then you divide, you use this Kanban board to track down the process. There are even tools uh, such as computer agile tools that achieve to this outcome, but you can also use a whiteboard with sticking with uh, notes and stuff like this to achieve the same outcome. What you do here is that there's the product backlog with limited items and you show what in the progress, in the number of developers, you limit this. For example, if you have only two developers in your company, you will never ever give them more than five tasks at a time. So if they have more than five tasks or four tasks, that's it. You're not gonna keep, you, you will keep them in the backlog, but not in progress. And as the tasks move on, tested and done, you will move the backlog into the progress. And each day, you're going to have like 15 minutes meeting to track down how these are working. And you're going to, of course, some of the tasks will be blocked or not be done at all. So you can put them into the waste and show them in the Kanban board as well. So we are in the last two minutes of my 40 minutes. So uh, I'm going to stop this session now and uh, start with the next 40 minutes. Okay. If there is a quick question, I can answer it. If there is not, please go back to big blue button. I'm gonna send you another invitation so you can join in the next part of the course, okay? Any questions before I stop this? Cool, let's go to the big blue button and continue.